Each spring, alewives and other diadromous fish return to the Kennebec River estuary to begin their upstream migration. I probably have looked in, walked through, took pictures of, measured at least 800 culverts. And I can't help but when I drive down the road and I see a little dip, I look over to see what's there, what kind of culvert's there. At this particular site right here, Behind me you see a spawning habitat for anadromous alewives that come up from the ocean and they've traveled hundreds of miles while at sea moving up and down the coast between the Bay of Fundy and the Carolinas. And when they mature they come back to this area where they were originally born and produce the next generation of alewives. All through the 80s, we had a really bad problem with phosphorus. In the middle of the summer, we have these terrible algae blooms, so what do we do about it? All the usual sources of phosphorus weren't present. We attended a meeting in Wiscasset. At that meeting, it came out that ponds with alewives had less problems with phosphorus. The alewife is born in a freshwater pond. They'll spend the summer in the pond. And then in the fall, the young juvenile alewives leave en masse, taking with them a lot of phosphorus. We developed a monitoring plan with DMR, which includes a stop trap. How many volunteers? Over 40 counters. So what we do every day is we take the temperature, we count the fish. On a few of the fish, we determine the gender. Then we take a few scales from behind the dorsal fin. This will be sent to the lab. The um, fish in our pond are totally unrelated to the ones that were stocked for many years by the DMR. So they are an outlying population. The first couple of times I helped, it was pretty boring. We took the water temperature because there was nothing in the trap. And then the next year, there are a couple of fish in the trap. About four years after the obstructions on the lower part of Sewell Creek had been removed, then a big wave came. We went from a little over 1,000 fish in the spring of 2007 to 12,400 fish the spring of 2000. 12. The following year, the numbers dropped again because we had low flow in the pond and the culvert was deteriorating to the point that it had sprung a leak. We realized the next step was we needed to replace the culvert. When I became involved in this project, I was really excited to see such a strong local interest and knowledge about this system and the initiatives it was amazing. People were very active in trying to obtain grants and seeking assistance in engineering and learning about engineering and learning about the biology. We do not have a typical stream crossing. We have a control structure at a headwater. We have a coastal culvert that has to respond to sea level rise. We have multiple species, not just river herring using the culvert. The fish get to travel under the road through a series of V-notch weirs. The culvert's designed so it has a series of pools and small drops. The pools are resting places for the fish. And then we spend a lot of time working on the hydraulics of the notches. So at different flow levels, the velocities would be slow enough that the fish could make their way up through it. Then we got to thinking about all the other creatures that use the corridor connecting the downstream area and the upstream area. We have seen using that corridor snapping turtles, painted turtles, beaver, mink, muskrat, frogs, snakes. Some of them would try to go over the top of the road because the culvert wouldn't accommodate their more aquatic passage and many were often killed. And in order to accommodate those, we kind of modified the design to make the culvert wider, which also helped with passing the 100-year floods. Now we have a culvert that has a ramp with the natural rocks in place 
to mimic a sort of a rocky area. This is one of the first wildlife crossings constructed for wildlife beyond fish in the state of Maine. We had to have a way for the elvers to get into the pond. They move when they're drifting with the currents and then just as they begin to be able to swim, they find all of our rivers and streams. We are passing them by wrapping a fabric around the weirs so they can actually work their ways into the mesh and then kind of wiggle their way up through the fast moving weirs. The northern population of American eel are very important because they're primarily all female and in the southern range they're primarily male and so sustaining these populations of eels is really important to the survival of the species. I'm just really inspired by the fact that the community would have had that type of vision and initiative and tenacity to stick with this and push it through. After three years of writing grants and writing reports and sending emails and all the legwork that it takes to make a project like this happen, to stand on the ground while the backhoe rips out the old twisted metal culvert and then to stand there only a couple days later and watch water flow from the pond is incredibly rewarding. It was just a, a huge success in demonstrating how to get a project done right in your own backyard and still have regional and national impacts at some level. Yeah, I think that's a big help. <laughs>